this isn't always real science. Uh, well, that's portrayed in movies. It's supposed to be fun. I will say that um, if we uh, still have some artists in the chat, um, Blue Period, it's a manga, and now it's a uh, an anime on Netflix. Uh, extremely accurate and true to life and awesome and inspiring. So if you want to watch something cool about how artists feel and learning to uh, learning to be a good artist, uh, I would recommend Blue Period. It has nothing to do with the ocean. <laughs> Just <laughs> ironic that we are in our Blue Period <laughs> heading to the surface. Everybody has a Blue Period. Sometimes it lasts a couple thousand meters. <laughs> We are at 950 meters, so getting close. Is that like geologically close? Yeah. <laughs> I put close in quotation marks I mean, there. I like <laughs> close, like an hour close. <laughs> I guess it would behoove me to change our status as we are now ascending. Um. Flag is St. Vincent of the Grenadines. Yeah, I did look it up. I just forgot to mention it. Yes, <laughs> that is the flag that we fly. Um, has reality television ever attempted to document day-to-day -day events aboard the Nautilus? Well, a documentary versus reality TV. So <laughs> the reality TV version would show us, like, all stressed out in the control van and, like, Half the crew would be in like these weird relationships and people would be like throwing food in the mess. But uh, <laughs> a documentary, there have been uh, documentaries that have been shot aboard the Nautilus. Um, there's a small library on board. Uh, what kind of amenities do we have? So it's not really a library. It's uh, the first, the original, uh, the last 
exploration vessel I was on did have a library, uh, but it was like a library workspace area apart from their uh, crew lounge. Um, our crew lounge and library, it's just a few shelves with some books on it, um, but it's a nice little collection down there. Um, but we have the, the lounge, the mess, uh, several decks that we can um, hang out on. Uh, some of them are covered so that we can eat outside even though there might be poor weather conditions. Um, you know, showers, beds. Our cabins are, um, my cabin has like a little desk in it. It's a two-person, some are four-person cabins. So yeah, normal life. People in the chat are asking if the arm is okay. The arm is swell. Look at how good it looks. It's just chomping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we zoomed in on a thing and then we got distracted and just kind of left it there. <laughs> but all is right with the world. Uh, what kind of data link do we have? That is a question for our tech team. Uh, we do have Wi-Fi capabilities, and um, we can hardwire into the Ethernet as well. Um, hardwiring into the Ethernet, like, yeah, we can stream, and we have more than this stream going on, actually. We also have classroom interactions right back behind us. So um, there's a lot of Internet usage going on. Uh, the Wi-Fi, though, you know, like if I want to use my laptop, is just okay. There are some things that will never load. For some reason, phones seem to work better than my laptop. So like I can load my email on my phone where I can just barely view it on my laptop. Yeah, I've, had, I've seen that same problem too. My phone seems to work a little bit better on the yeah. Wi-Fi and that could just be the way that um, the phones process information. The mobile versions of them. Yeah, the mobile versions are a little lighter weight. Is that Chrysogorgia poking out? I thought I saw it over on the right hand side. Poking out of where? Uh the look like one of the corals might have been poking out. Of the box? Of the box. Or yeah, like right right here. Or is that it's not even in the box. That's a bonus sample. Bonus. Bonus. You get a bonus, and you get a bonus. Uh, ROV question um, about the zinc plates. Is there a zinc plate on the uh, manipulator arm? There's zinc. Zinc's on everything. Yeah, look at all those zincs. Sacrificial anodes. Those little gray nuggets on the magnum arm are sacrificial zinc anodes. How often do you have to change those anodes? Uh, a little bit more often than we do. <laughs> <laughs> a good answer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. When they, when they need it, when they're too corroded. That's the same answer to changing your toothbrush or uh, me changing my, con my monthly contacts. Yeah, exactly. A little less often than I do. <laughs> But I should rather. I always forget, like, when I first started using them. So, like, yeah, I never put like a reminder on my phone. Not gonna lie, I purposely bought half a year of contacts because my insurance paid for all of that, and I'm just wearing them for two months at a time because they're fine. They're fine. 
Are the dive streams archived and viewable by the public? Um, you can watch highlights for sure. The whole dive stream? Don't know. I don't think so. Do you know video, Aaron? Sorry, what was that? Uh, the dive streams, are they archived and viewable by the public? I don't think the whole stream. Um, for a while, yes, I believe they are. Okay. Um, but they are all, like, all the dives are archived. And then Megan looks at them all. Yes, Megan gets to look through every single one of these all over again. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Including all the blue water footage and all of the transit deck cam footage. <laughs> Annotate the deck cam footage, right? Right, right. Of course, right. yeah. Right. You got to make sure you see who's on deck. <laughs> Identify all those humans. See if I can remember everybody's name. No, I don't look through the deck cam footage. And I don't even look through all the blue water. I just, uh, I scroll right through it. Oh. Yeah. Look at that. There's something on Argus right now. Yeah, Check there's that a out. siphonophore. You don't catalog that? You don't annotate that? You don't note that? No. And note? I do my annotating for deep sea corals, so you don't really find a lot of midwater coral. Oh, there's a little squishy. Hey, buddy. Squish, squish. Oh, I missed a question. Any formal way of... Uh, well, there's way a really nice jelly in the Argus cam. Yeah. Look at that. Um, is there any way to stay active on the ship? Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> We've been having some uh, really gnarly rocking. So, honestly, just walking up and down these like ladder stairs every day is a challenge. As well as if you have the top bunk also a workout to get up there sometimes but we also have a little gym that has basically everything you need not, not every single machine that you would find on a gym floor but like it has all the stuff that i need anyway um and more i usually use the rowing machine down there Do non ROV question. Oh no. Do you have to do lifeboat drills regularly? So we have a muster drill once a month. I only have to do it once because I'm only on board for two weeks ish. Um, and anytime you have to meet in an emergency at sea, it's called a muster muster drill. Um, so we don't like deploy the lifeboats. I feel like there's not a great way to get them back in if we did that because <laughs> you don't usually come back on the boat once you've. Uh, put out the lifeboats, but um, and we do do drills. 
Pio question. How much use are eyes at the depth of 3,000 meters? Like, do you need eyes down there? Do you need them? Um, maybe. Maybe. Um, there is light because animals are producing light through bioluminescence. So uh, eyes that can detect light could be very useful. But you're not going to be able to resolve an image in the same way you or I might resolve an image. Um, you don't. These animals are likely not seeing color in the same way we see color. So the type of eyes that we're used to thinking uh, when we think about eyes, no, those types of eyes aren't going to be as useful in the deep sea. But eyes can be useful. There are also a lot of animals that don't have eyes um, that might have eyes at shallower depths. So there are a few blind fishes that don't have eyes and they get along with life just fine. So eyes can be helpful, but they're not 100% necessary. Ooh, a nautical question. Have we encountered pirates? Well, let me put it this way. What on a research vessel would a pirate want to steal? Um, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> we don't really have anything. Exactly. Uh, we have lots of things that are expensive, but not necessarily valuable. Yep. So, nope. Uh, if I ever should join you, do I get food or do I have to pack some cup ramen? We have cup ramen, apparently. Um, <laughs> that was a surprise to me. Um, but yeah, they do provide food. We get three meals a day and there's an endless supply of snacks. And like there's like cake o'clock or cake like magically appears or like brownies or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, the time between lunch and dinner, some sort of dessert will appear. And then magically. if it's your birthday, they bake a special cake for you. On top of the dessert. So, yeah, there's plenty of food. Um, if you have food allergies like me, you tell the chef what you can and well, what you can't have, um, and they try to work around your diet. Uh, some ships are better at that than others. Um, some ships will like label everything and like put uh, they like allergy warnings on stuff. Um, but it they're almost always buffet style, so you can go and look at things and you can ask questions like, "What's in this?" Uh, they can help you out, so you won't starve. Yeah. Ransom is the main thing for pirates nowadays. I can tell you, uh, my family <laughs> does not have <laughs> the funds to uh, get me out of a pirate situation. So again, yeah, we're not, pirates don't care about us. Where we are in the ocean right now is, is relatively safe. You're not going to encounter too many other vessels out here. It's just so far away from most things. Um, so it's unlikely that that could be a problem. But in the case that it is, uh, we do have some drills that we practice and uh, the captain will inform us of what to do in a situation like that. So um, the crew knows what to do and we uh, as a science team, we'll muster and, and and find a safe place. And hopefully we can get out of that sort of situation. But uh, it's not a situation we expect to ever find ourselves in. Yep. Megan, have you ever heard of a barrel eye fish? It's this commenter's favorite fish. I have heard of a barrel eye fish. And yesterday I was wearing leggings that had that fish on it. What were you? Yeah. You, did you miss my deep sea leggings? I didn't know they had a barrel eye fish. On yeah, that. there's a barrel eye fish on there and all sorts of other uh, deep sea animals. Um, yeah, so th they're a midwater fish. They live here in the water column. And they have those really giant barrel eyes in order to capture any photon of light that might be making it down through the water and using that to see. So it's really trying to use its eyes and that's why the eyes are so large and actually look upwards through its head in order to see things from above. It's a really cool fish. So wild. like. Something that you would never expect Super to see. Super exciting news, not to interrupt, but there's a boat off of our, what side? Starboard side. What? 
It's very far away, but it's still there. Cool. This person said they'd love to have a real ROV. We were talking earlier, you can make one. Um, there's a couple of websites online with like YouTube videos linked to them. Um, you just need some, what did you say, a PVC pipe, a little motor and controls? Yep, and then maybe some um, noodle, foam noodle for flotation. Yep. So you can, you can make that a possibility. Okay, yep. yeah, it's not gonna be like seven feet tall and look like Hercules, but. Yeah, I mean, there's a difference between Spending twenty dollars at Home Depot and spending, you know, three million dollars. I know I missed that. What? Huh? <laughs> this person. That's one fish that I cannot figure out how to crochet. The uh, the barrel <laughs> fish. Yeah, that would be difficult. Yeah. Uh, have you any of us written books about these cruises? Um, Jess Sandoval has a collection of poetry that she's written and I believe her sister illustrated she's one of our ROV pilots I think they just printed it up themselves uh, my deliverable for this cruise is likely going to be a book or an illustrated uh, log of our journey so the answer is sort of Yeah, this commenter said majority of the oceans are safe. Yep, that is true. Because uh, one of our, our navigators just walked in and said, hey, there's a boat. Because it's surprising for us to see a boat. So it's, you know, we don't encounter too many people out here. Yeah, and likely uh, the ship is probably another research vessel. So that's happened before where... Yep. We've been out and actually spotted another research vessel doing work. Um, do we also have fire drills? All drills are the same drill. It's the muster drill. They all just run up there and... Uh, they're sorry. not all the same. Well, they're not all the, the same. The signals are different. They are. We have. Uh, but our muster station is the same for each one. Yep. One of the science team, they just gather us up like sheep. Like, here, stand here. <laughs> we'll tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. So we just go there and wait for further instruction and put on a life jacket. And yeah, we do have different rings. Um, some of them make kind of cool patterns. Thought about a tattoo. I'd never get a tattoo. <laughs> a research turf war. No, we are all very nice to each other and we help each other out. So <laughs> there's no turf wars. That'd be hilarious though. Sometimes there's turf uh, with the Navy, though. Oh, yeah. They will tell us, oh, you can't go to this place because we're using it. Even because though we're we've, using yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Even though we've been, like, scheduled to be there for well over a year, and uh, they knew that. But sometimes they run their drills, and they get preference over which areas of the ocean they use. I recall correctly uh, when we were in port, like by the time that I came on uh, in Honolulu, the um, the military base was messing with our uh, internet, so, like they were blocking some stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <laughs> we don't always get along. Are we gonna have a party this weekend? Every day's a party. That's probably because we're the question is because we're done with the uh, expedition and the season. But I think. I think there's ice cream on Sunday. Yeah, Not I think they're I saving ice cream for us on Sunday. I can't have ice cream, but I will appreciate the gesture. If there's no ice cream, we're going to be really sad. <laughs> yeah, we start lots of hot rumors then <laughs> <laughs> about totally benign things. <laughs> we'll see. So I bet we'll start seeing some really... Uh, Interesting stuff coming up here in the water column. We are getting to that scattering layer depth. So all the animals that were up close near the surface at night are coming back down here to hide during the day. So we might see some fish, a lot more jellies. What was this called? The false bottom? The 
second thought and what was it called? Yeah, so uh, during our lecture the other night, um, when we send down our sonars, they're, they can get a reflection that looks like a false bottom uh, just because all the animals that have air pockets and, and tissues here at this layer of the ocean will reflect that sound back to us, making it look like there is a bottom shallower than the actual bottom of the ocean. Uh, but that's all biomass, that's animals. It's common just as moon pool. Yeah, the moon pool's in the middle of the gym. So there's just this sealed but hole to the ocean in the middle of the gym. Just waiting for that follow-up question in the chat. Wait, why is there a hole to the ocean in the middle of the boat? Well, we need that hole to the ocean for our USBL beacons. So we lower what is essentially a stem, and it will help us hear our beacons that are on the ROV. And that helps us track where the ROV is during our dives. Uh, there's mention of the thermocline. Um, that doesn't show up on the on the um, multi beam. Can you use that information? So you can see the thermocline if you go to our science data. Yeah. Oh, that's as, right. Yeah. As we go through the different layers of water, as we are making our, our ascent. To the surface, you'll see on the graphs in the science data tab how the temperature is rising. So when we left bottom, it was probably just under 3 degrees Celsius, and now it looks to be around a little over 6 degrees Celsius and climbing quickly. And as you see that more steep change in temperature as we get closer to the surface, that is the thermocline. You can also see a halocline if you're looking at salinity. Um, oh, they were saying that sonar, yeah, the, the density and temperature changes do affect the sonar. Um, Aaron, do you have time to talk about that? Yeah, um, yeah, so it's the refraction as the sound travels down, it hits different um, impedance contrast, either density or temperature that cause a, a density difference or a combination of the two that cause a density difference in the water column and will refract the acoustic pulse that's going down and coming back up. So we measure, we do sound speed profiles, or we do salinity and temperature profiles and calculate sound speed um, in order to compensate for that when we are collecting multi-beam data. Otherwise, we would have an incorrect depth. The moon pool is the path to the brig. No, but there is uh, this super, well, okay, in my opinion, it's super cool, like hatch in the middle of the hallway that leads down to the engine room. But they described it as like, you just lift this thing up and then you travel down this tunnel and then you'll be in the engine room. Like, Can we go down there? But I guess it's just for emergencies. Bridge nav. Did you see that uh, shiny, squiggly? Oh, oh we yeah, just passed like 500 meters. Yeah, so that gold little string that looked like it was swimming across the screen. That, I think, was a snipe eel. Ooh, no way. Yeah. I just thought it was like a super dazzling siphonophore or something. <laughs> no, no, I'm pretty sure it was a snipe eel. So snipe eels are pretty cool. They have these long beaks. Um, and their teeth are facing backwards to snag the, uh, the antennas of shrimp. That's their preferred thing to eat. 
You know it doesn't have teeth in the ocean? What? A seahorse. <laughs> yes, we did learn that. Nor a stomach. It's my favorite factoid of this entire cruise, I think. It has absolutely nothing to do with our research or location. It's just one of those things that you think the marine biologists would know, but apparently not. Well, you'd think they would have told us, right? Yeah, I just it wasn't something I learned uh, in our intro to marine science class. Like, we know that sharks have a bunch of teeth and that, you know, when they fall out, they're replaced, which is weird. Mm -hmm. And so, like, that seems like it should be in that, like, batch of things that you just tell children. Look, this thing is, oh, yeah, like, it's the seahorse we know that, like, the male carries the... Um, yeah, I feel like that should be on the fact sheet at, like, yeah. the aquarium. Yeah. Maybe it is, and I just didn't read it very well. <laughs> You just walk in, I'm a marine biologist, I know all of this. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I definitely read the fact sheets uh, when I'm at the aquarium. Just, you know, fact check. See if I learned something. See if you can teach them something. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, excuse but me. But like, oh no, that name is not up to date. So I probably can't do that because uh, there aren't a lot of deep sea animals not at the true. aquarium. And I really only know the deep sea animals. <laughs> We've had an SCF <gasps> Look switch. At this guy. Oh, missed it. Oh, for the last 30 minutes. Uh, I get my 30 minute of SPL today <laughs> while Avery Annie eats breakfast with Ford Interaction. Mm -hmm. Welcome to 4 to 8. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird when you don't have a watch and you're just like, anyone who needs anything, I'm like, I'll come cover for you. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> A team player. <laughs> you want to sit Herc for this recovery? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> I had an RV question. So, okay. uh, when you're learning how to pilot uh, the ROV, uh, I understand that you start as the co-pilot flying Argus, and then you move to the Herc seat. What, what are the most important things to learn? Uh, what do the buttons do? That's a good one. Um, I say that kind of jokingly, but really, there's a lot of stuff going on, and it's hard to know what things do what. I don't know. Not just in a, oh, this turns the light on, but in like, how does the vehicle handle? If I push it all the way ahead on this joystick, what does it actually do? Um, I'd say that's the most important thing to start with. And then the spatial awareness of where is Argus, where is Herc, where, what is happening, where is the terrain, where are we moving? 
all that stuff. Those are the probably step one and step two. In terms of like launch and recovery, uh, is that more difficult than flying on bottom? It's differently difficult. Um, I'd say it's more difficult because there's a lot of things that can go wrong a lot faster and they can involve at times people's safety so that i would say that makes it more difficult difficult is a hard word to use there but yeah it's, there's some there's a lot of different aspects to that that are very different from flying on the bottom and they can have higher, higher consequences that's like well, when we're on the bottom, things are generally pretty safe. Pretty, right? pretty, the, yeah, pretty yeah. safe. And as we come up to the surface, things are can go sketchy more quickly, mm -hmm. as you say. So it's like everybody's paying attention and really mm -hmm. focusing and dealing with all that. Yeah, I don't know if it's more difficult. It's just different, and you got to be watching everything more carefully. Everything seems to happen in a quick succession. Totally. Megan, if you want to, you can, um, come because you're gonna nav next year mm -hmm. you can come sit up here and listen on trainer if you want to see what's happening on a recovery okay yeah that'd be great yeah this is a little bit different than uh what i've been used to because there's the two pieces instead of one package to recover i don't think Every ship's a little different no matter yeah, what, right? Every, yeah, every ship's a little different. The way they go about launching and recovering. You want the pointer? Are you going? <laughs> what was the duck doing up there? It's <laughs> not nice, Trey. We are currently at 330 meters and ascending. We should be on deck by 8 o'clock. Sorry, Megan, if you want to come up, come up now. Okay. Holding down the back row by myself. <laughs> Good 
Well, I come up for my 30 minutes and now I'm just by myself. <laughs> I was going to say, are you by yourself <laughs> back there? <laughs> huh. Where'd everyone go? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. I'll survive. You'll hold the port. I think I get to do the beginning of the next dive as well, so I get the ending of one and the Chocolate. beginning of the other. <laughs> Perfect. Antonella and Trevor, we have a good question for you. Hit me. Okay, someone's asking, given an unlimited budget <laughs> in future tech to build the necessary components, is there a, any significant changes that you would make to either ROV? I'd make them newer. <laughs> um, unlimited budget. Unlimited budget. Hmm. I feel like I have to think hard. Think hard before I answer that. It's tough when someone gives you all the money. Yeah, I couldn't even begin to think of what, what to do with unlimited money. Torpedoes? Torpedoes? Science torpedoes, yeah. Uh, can you add, can you develop a better camera? Like a 4K yep. camera Ooh, that's yeah, good? Yeah, 4K. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, let's do 8K. Let's 8K, skip yeah, 4K. 8K for sure. Yeah, might as well like future proof it. Yeah, but then you get uh, stability, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Ooh, be... and have it so the, the video engineer can move it, pan and tilt. Totally, yeah. Ooh. Well, you could do that within the 8K, yeah. with your 4K subsample, that's whatever true. that's called. That's true. Anyways, that's what I would spend the money as a no one. I like it. I like it. I mean, it's 14 not function ROV, manipulator. It's... Yeah. Ooh. So many functions. Could have a system to launch mini vehicles from Herc. Mini vehicles. Just puke them out. <laughs> <laughs> Where they go? Just at random. I've watched the studio presentation so many times because I can see it in my screen. <laughs> they have a good system down. Huh? They have a good system. They on. do. It's really well done. I am sad that tomorrow, sad and happy, but that tomorrow is the last, it's the last day for interactions. interactions. Oh, except for my... One Except thing. for you. Yeah, yeah. But it's no, not an interaction. But no schools are no more school. over the weekend, and a lot of schools are um, going to be off for Christmas holiday. Do you have a total tally of what? Yeah, yes. <laughs> but I will have a better number for you tomorrow. Okay, cool. Mm. We did reach the goal that we were hoping to reach for Ooh, nice number of interactions. But That's I, awesome have a hefty goal for the number of students we were hoping to reach for the year too through. Well, what was the number you got? For a number of interactions? Yeah, for a number of students you wanted to reach. Um, for a number of students we wanted to reach, we wanted to reach around 15,000. Whoa, oh, wow. that's amazing. Did you make the goal? Um, I will know tomorrow when I do the math after tomorrow's interactions. Wow. That's a lot of people. 15,000 really cool. students, yep. that would be so cool. We were hoping to, um, our goal for interaction total number, um, either before the season started and also during the season, just in general for 2021 for reaching out to students, uh, was 300 connections. Wow. And we did reach that. We're, That's we're so over awesome. that. Wow. Yeah. I think after tomorrow, our total will be a, somewhere between 330 and 340. Whoa. You didn't just meet it. You were like well over it. <laughs> The last cruise, um, the three weeks when we were in the monument, the and not just the SCFs, anyone that participated in any of them, they did 77 interactions Jeez. in three weeks. That's nuts. <laughs> That's so many. I run a tight ship.
Those SCFs are amazing. Amazing, yeah. yeah. I don't know how they have the energy. <laughs> Me neither. And without them, like, I could not do this. Yeah. You know, there's That's no way incredible. one comms person could. No, there's absolutely any no that. way. Yeah, I'm really, really happy and really thankful we can bring you fellows had, back out. I was gonna say you've had some really driven SCFs. Yeah. It's been great having. I mean, they've been deferred for a few years now. This is the second yeah. year, so it's been really nice having what? people come back out. How does someone apply for it? Is it just an online application? Yes. Uh, we did not open it up for next year, unfortunately. Uh, we still had to get some of the um, accepted teachers out who applied in 2019. Um, and due to COVID, we couldn't bring them out until this year, and then some are coming out next year. But we do hope to open up applications uh, on our website under education uh, for the 2023 season. Fingers crossed. But by next year, we should have all of our deferred teachers and interns. So then you can open it up safe. again. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That'll be awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's been tough not being able to open up. Everyone's asking. Yeah. And it's I been get, hard. I get asked all the time. <laughs> I know. It's been so hard. But I'm also, I really appreciate that we deferred the interns and teachers. I think yeah. some companies could have just started said, over. Oh, sorry. Like, yeah. we're in a pandemic. You can't go to sea anymore. But it was nice that we could at least bump them. Are we at 200 meter depth? 200 meters. There's lots of training going on. <laughs> I know. It's nice though. It's really cool.
Oh, we had a good question come up about the uh, control room. So uh, the question was, is your control room built for the ship? Or what would the room that we're all in normally be on the ship? So yeah, this control van was built uh, specifically for this purpose, to, for all of us to come up here and work while the ROVs are in the water. So when we're not diving, it's still a control van, still everything set up the way that it needs to be. Um, it is full of computers and full of uh, monitors and full of any type of technology you would need for running uh, basically everything to stream to the world of what we're doing. So um, it's a newer control van. We just added uh, more space to it and rearranged the seats a bit, which is, I think, in my opinion, this van is way more roomier and uh, you can fit a lot more people in here and more seats just configure it a bit better. But yeah, it's always a control room. I think it's way better. Me too. <laughs> I was just saying how um, the little SCF corner used to be so cold and you'd but see it's still nice now because we can still see, like, Yeah. I feel like everyone is, you can at least, I mean, the front row, it's hard to see the back row, but you can at least You're be everyone's better. in the same location. Yeah. yeah. Just remember how cold they always looked. <laughs> Bundled yeah. up. The control van is very chilly. We have a lot of ACs running all the time um, to keep all of our monitors and computers happy.
the top of Herc's feed, you can see one of the sharks. Deck control. Go ahead. Five zero meters, full stop. Yeah, we're just getting everybody set up out here. Roger. Control van main deck, we're all set down here. Are we okay to recover? Control van is ready to recover. Yeah, bridge main deck, radio check. Loud and clear, Mark. Okay to continue up? You can proceed with loud. Recovery. Coming up. 